Right, good afternoon, everyone. Many years ago, when I was young and naive, I wrote a, a shell script to monitor some systems using all sorts of weird commands like sed and awk. And um, the only reason why I did that is because Python wasn't released yet. So today we have Tobias. He's talking about uh, shell scripting and how to write really good uh, command line interfaces to your applications. Cool, take it away. Thanks, Travis. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Tobias. I'm a data scientist at um, Argon Asset Management. We're an investment management firm, and um, yeah, I've written a lot of shell scripts over the time, and I'll give some more detail about that um, just now. Just um, the presentation is on GitHub. The link is in the bottom left corner. You can download it. If you're on a POSIX system, there's install instructions. You can run it at your own pace, probably in parallel with um, the talk. And yes, here's some links where to get in touch with me. Right, so my title is You Suck at Shell Scripting and How to r Not Do That and Rather Build Some Awesome Tools in Python. So, oh, <laughs> right, so the background for this talk is that I found myself um, spending a lot of time doing shell scripting and looking up bash syntax and always like, why do I need double square brackets for testing instead of single square brackets? And when I just looked at the amount of time I was spending on this, when I, um, I'm a Python programmer, I had to come to the conclusion, I suck at shell scripting. Why um, do I spend so much time shell scripting when all over the web you'll find that Python is supposed to be a great scripting language. So why do I keep using Bash to automate my things when I've got Python um, right there and I'm competent in Python? So I found there's just some sort of, somehow I had some resistance and there uh, was this impedance mismatch to actually using Python to do my everyday scripting. So I thought, okay, maybe I just haven't looked in the right corners. So I did a bit of more investigation um, as to what is the current support for Python in this shell scripting space. And after a bit of digging, I found that Python 3 is awesome for shell scripting. So my talk's going to be about how to use Python 3 to meet all your shell scripting needs so you don't have to um, hassle with brittle bash scripts and one-liners that fall over just when you are on the high load. All right. Um, why does it keep jumping to... Okay, so the objectives for the talk then highlight some Python 3 features that I think make it really great for shell scripting. Um, I find like so sometimes little things that matter, f-strings and pathlib. Then the click library, there's a number of um, tools out there for how to make um, parse command line options and make um, CLI tools, but I, I like click, so that's what I'm going to talk about. And finally, in order to have a concrete example, I want something that I kind of wanted to build for myself. So I work in finance and <laughs> Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, all the rage these um, days. So we're like, let's um, build a little tool to pull um, prices off the web and get them um, streaming to stand it out so I can collect them and um, put them wherever I want. And along the way, learn about some um, sort of new um, Python features and libraries that I've read great things about and I haven't really had a chance to use before. So if we have time, I can, I've prepared some slides for those, but um, we might have to skip those. In, yeah, but in async IO, so we had Adam early on give a, a great talk on um, that and crossbar IO, and also the Atters um, package and the streams package, which is a very small package by um, Matthew Rockland, but I think it's pretty handy in this space. Okay, so first thing, f-string. So looking at the impedance mismatch, why do I keep going back to bash? So I try to look through like my bash scripts and see like what is the worst offending um, one-liner that I could find. Now, this was all in one line. In order to fit it on the slide, I had to um, format it. And like this, it doesn't actually look so bad. It looks like quite a nice sort of data pipeline. Like each thing passes something on to the next line. But I think one reason why you end up maybe using something like this 
quite a lot is that it's got a very convenient syntax for string interpolation from environment variables. So you see the registry URL and the Docker image are environment variables that get interpolated into the string and um, use that. And obviously, we can do that in, in Python. Um, but what it sort of used to look like in, in my code base is I just use the, the curly braces and then have dot .format and that at the end. And yeah, that somehow just doesn't feel <coughs> kind of quite as um, fast and convenient. So then you end up just um, working in bash because like you can just bash it out quickly. However, with Python 3, you can now, um, it gives you f-strings. So now we've got um, very convenient um, string interpolation in Python here as well. So the only addition is put a little f in front of the, the string, and you can interpolate any in an, um, variable that's in your environment at that um, point. So who here is on Python 3.6 and uses f-strings every day? Okay maybe like 5% of the audience. So the rest of you, you don't know what you're missing out on. Um, this uh, library that I started building for this talk is the first place where um, I started using them. And since then, I like, regret every time I have to go back to my Python 2.7 code base to like, use the old format uh, method. Great reason to upgrade to Python 3.6. Right. The Next feature is pathlib. So obviously, if you're doing, if you're working in Bash, you're having to work with files, paths, do a lot of um, path manipulation. Now, Python has always had tools for that. Your OS path module, I'm sure you're all familiar with. However, for me, I don't know. Uh, it's never really. If I was interactively working at a REPL in like uh, IPython or Jupyter Notebook. I I've got some sort of string, now I have to sort of jump to the front of um, the, the line to put in os.path um, or os.path.join or something, and I'm in Jupyter, so my Vim bindings don't work, and like it's just uh, frustrating to um, work there. Whereas um, Python 3 introduces the pathlib module that used to be a little bit um, broken in some of the earlier threes, but now I don't know if it's 3.5 or 3.6, they sort of went through the whole standard library, so it now talks nicely to all the other um, file, uh, file objects or anywhere where a file is um, required. And Pathlib is awesome, um, and I'll probably be spending quite a bit of time there. Um, so just a show of hands again here, who's using Pathlib in their Python code bases at the moment? Okay, again, maybe like 2% of the audience. So uh, I'm glad I'm showing you something that um, you may not be using already. Hopefully by the end of the talk, you'll be convinced that Pathlib is the way to go. Okay, so yeah, we can do, I've prepared all the statements here, um, but I can also jump to the next um, window and interactively pull these commands up on the screen. Um, who's for the interactive version? Okay, yeah. I think that's the majority. Cool. So, uh, here we go. Um, Okay, so uh, Python. Okay, so first the main thing, or the only so yes, statement from Pathlib that I generally need is import path, which is a generic path object. So you can just say now look at the current path and we look at it, okay. We've got a, a path object. Now yeah, we, uh, that one's very not so interesting. So you now see dot doesn't tell us much. So what is the absolute path? And notice that it's all of these are methods on the 
um, path object itself. So I don't have to remember or do any thinking. I just kind of start hitting tab, or start typing, start hitting tab, and then let IPython do the thinking for me. So you can see, okay, here it comes back as another path object. If you maybe rather want a string representation, <coughs> see, um, then that's a uh, POSIX path. So another method there. <coughs> if you're on Windows, um, yeah, so we can do p dot absolute. Not as All right. It's the same as before, but um, I think yeah, there's other versions <coughs> for Windows paths. Or if you need to put this in um, as a URI. Um, okay. Here we go. Get it as a file URI. So now it's ready for putting in a, a web form or something. Then, um, yes, we, if you want to find out where does this sit, find the parent. Uh, oh that's okay, no, that is not as smart as... as um, ah, see, I missed the step, that's why things aren't working. So here... Um, so now I've got a file or something easily access the the parent directory. Also if you want to find um, if you let's say you have some sort of root path for your package where it's installed and you want to find what, what is my relative path to where uh, that a current module has relative to the package p dot relative to p dot parent Gives you just the the last um, last bits. Okay, who here thinks that's pretty cool? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> right. So next, now let's start a a new um, thing. Oh yeah, the other thing is the path um, module overloads the forward slash operator on path objects. So now you can use forward slash um, in order to construct other paths from existing paths. So a queue, queue is a, another path now that's um, something based on the existing path. So I'm going to say um, check does a file or a path exist. The directory p existed because it was a current directory. Does q exist? No. Um, and what is p a uh, directory? Yes, is p a uh, file? No. Okay. So now suddenly it's very convenient to work with paths. No more, um, I don't know, some sort of string dash um, f or dash e, and then do I need to use double square bra braces around it or single square? Uh, I can work in Python, which I know and love and um, productive. Um, all right. So now try and find all the subdirectories of a current directory, or we can just use list comprehension. So x for x in p dot iter dir if x dot is dir. Alright, thanks. Uh, yeah. Alright. Um, I don't know if IPython does that work? Yes. Um, um, what did I miss? Sub X4, XM. Uh, and the end there. There we go. Um, Okay, with these, the I had to make obviously the font size bigger to the screen, so it's a little bit hard to read, but you can see easily to find um, all the files in the current directory, or 
same here, this line, if you want to find all the, um, yeah, all the files or all the directories. Then if you, whenever I used um, os.path or in Python 2, I also find myself using the glob module lot, so it's lot from glob, import glob. Globs come kind of standard on path objects, so you can, you can do p.glob, let's look at um, uh, star.markdown uh, files. Um, I guess a lot of these things give you back I iterators. So you can only wrap them in lists. Um, so you can do glob expansions, and what I find quite um, useful is also you get an R glob, which gives you um, recursive for the whole subtree, um, finds all the um, finds all globs in the in the subtree. So yeah, what I kind of often sort of do is like maybe do a sort of glob iterate over the subtree and then find and um, use a regex to like filter out the files I actually want. Or there may there may be better methods. I haven't explored it in that much detail. I kind of found what I needed and um, that's what I use day to day. Okay, any questions so far? It's all pretty straightforward, right? That's, that's what we want. Like low <coughs> overhead just should make sense. Yes? Yeah. Um, all right, so the question was, there's POSIX path and Windows path. Can you extend this to like S3 paths or for some sort of um, <coughs> cloud storage? I don't know. I guess you could probably ex um, extend it. Uh, the documentation online, I think, sort of covers um, uh, well Windows path and like POSIX path. When I looked at the online documentation, I found that there's a lot, it sort of immediately goes into quite a bit of detail as to the different path types. I'm like, oh, this sounds now complicated. At the end of the day, I never worry about that. Doesn't matter what platform I'm on. I just use path, the, the sort of constructor, and then it doesn't care whether you uh, on Windows or uh, or Linux. It will subtype it to whatever is appropriate. But um, sure, another question over there. So you have the microphone. Sorry, we just wait for the mic. The Q earlier, mm -hmm. which didn't exist, I presume there's some way you can create. Yes, that's going to be the next section. Yes. Um, I can't remember if I remember to put in the, so that's like dash P on Mike Mechder in on POSIX. Um, and definitely does exist. Um, I can't remember if I included it in here, but um, okay, well let's have a look here. We'll do it. Okay, um, so um, thank you for that question. That takes us to our next good segue to our next um, little section here. <coughs> so now we had Q, which didn't exist. Uh, clear, right? Um, now we can just q dot make dir, and now q exists. Okay. Now what about something more complicated? So let's say q, um, or let's say q two, is p forward slash a forward slash b forward slash c. Look at the path there. Then you can say q dot make dir and then I think parent equals true and then pretty awesome right yeah all right um, so that's paths and directories next for files um, Yeah, like there's an example here. Um, um, maybe I, I was kind of lazy to write it out, but okay, it doesn't take that long. So let's say a file is q new file dot text. Then you can say fp dot open and uh, write. Hello, PyCon. Okay, 
and then I don't know if we need to FBR close. Uh, and so no, okay, that was the file. Okay, so I think that should have worked. Um, let's see FP dot. Yes, and I can say FP dot. Okay, so also creating files. All kind of pretty straightforward in how you would expect. Right. So I think the f last little section on um, pathlib. In order to delete a file, you have to do fp.unlink. Now that's kind of my only sort of bugbear with with pathlib. I tend to forget the unlink. Um, I guess it'll become thing a memory after a while. But I'm not sure why it isn't just called rm or um, remove or delete or something. But just you've been warned. You want to delete files? You have to use uh, unlink. Um, now we'll find that fp no longer exists. And same for the directory. Okay, arm dear, that's be interesting now because now we created something in there. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. Okay, I think that was a different path, so we're, we're good. Okay, so that's it for. Um, Path creation, any question there, path lib. I think, yeah, it makes um, working with files easy and um, convenient in Python. It's great. Uh, you can, in Python 2, there are two modules. There's path lib and path lib 2. Apparently, path lib 2 is the one that has the back ports from Python 3. Um, makes it a bit of a, uh, oh, actually, I haven't tried with 6. I don't know if it automatically converts it, but... Just, I think, use passlib2 if you're in, in, in Python 2. But so it is available for you to use in Python 2 right now. Okay, let's jump through these. Here we are. Okay, so um, that's for working with paths. Obviously, working with URLs and things, there's the, the requ requests module. Um, I'm not really going to talk uh, much about that. I think the remainder of the talk will be about creating command line interfaces. Um, all right, so now I think command line interfaces have been getting a bad rap. It's generally sort of seen as like old school, or cane, difficult. It's 40 years of bad branding. I think given the current state of times, just rebrand them as chatbot-like interfaces rather than <laughs> command line interfaces. And I'm, I'm only half joking, because I think it's basically, they are a bit like chatbots, it's interact interacting with your application through text. And I think the popularity of um, JSON or text, text things remains a major kind of form, so use it. And the best way to um, interact with an application with text is a CLI. So we need a tool to build CLIs. I also like CLIs for another um, number of other reasons. Um, I think that following the whole sort of Unix philosophy of doing one thing well, and you've got this whole stack of tools like um, sort or head or etc. If you build a, a command line interface that takes some input from standard in and pipes it to standard out, you can immediately put it into your, your tool chain and do useful things with it. And I think <coughs> that tends to encourage like compositional thinking, functional type um, thinking, which means you're break your problem down into nice little simple tasks. So I find it's quite a nice um, way to structure your code. And Click makes um, creating CLIs really easy. And these days, if we have any sort of task that needs to be done more than once or like every couple of weeks or something, a, like build a quick CLI for it, then you've got it there. If you two months down the line, you haven't run it and you need to run it again, you can just type it dash dash help and it will give you help on how to run it. You don't have to remember what is the, the API um, or the sort of self-documenting tools. So I think they're, they're awesome. Okay, click, um, great library. It's, it's the documentation is hosted by um, Puku, so people at Flask and those sort of things. I tend to find that they make pretty nice tools. Um, and it gives a, a whole lot of stuff, automatic help page generation, parameter validation, 
yeah, arbitrary nesting of commands and supports lazy loading of subcommands as well, so you can actually um, pipe, sort of build the whole pipelines of um, things. I'm not an expert on docopt or optpars and why this is better, etc. I looked at this and I thought, okay, I can do this. It's low overhead for me. This is actually something I use day to day. Um, so that's the library I'm going to talk about. Um, so a uh, very basic example, um, just that's kind of like a minimal thing of what you um, need to build a command line tool. And um, so you import click, then uh, everything in click works through decorators. So then you put an at click dot command, say okay, the next function that we're going to decorate is going to be a, a CLI command. And then we give it um, some options. So in this case here you can, this, this tool will allow us to print hello and a name to the standard out. So it's got two options, um, dash dash count and dash dash name. You can see you can supply kind of defaults um, the for the name. You can say prompt so it will prompt you if it doesn't know. Help is what will be displayed on the um, on the command line, I think if you, yeah, it also sometimes if you don't give um, a help, it will use the doc string for the function, and that's it. So let's we go to our directory here, um, and we run. Let's go to what was it examples? Uh, Python greet. Uh, So PyCon ZA. Hello, PyCon ZA. So those are the prompt option. If you say I can't remember what the options are. See so we get um I uh, don't need to I'll clear and put it at the top. So with very little overhead, straight away gives us some like oh so, um can you see the left? So is it possible to move the screen at all? Um not right. um, so very little overhead, just a couple of decorators. You know, we get some nice um, output. So as I said, if you don't remember how to use your own tool, you can always go back, just type dash dash help, and get your um, output. Um, and let's say if you want to use a sort of more advanced usage, you could say lime um, PyCon ZA and count, I don't know, 10, yeah, I mean, it's no, just a proof of concept. But um, yeah, rather than this rather dry example, um, the next section will be um, uh, about tool that I've built with this, which will be the third um, part of this talk. But um, before we get there, another uh, nice thing with this is the entry points, which I don't know, I don't think um, they're responsible for it. I think that's part of setup tools, but I never really <laughs> understood it until I read the, the click documentation. So also, yeah, got the package has got great documentation. Go online, read the click documentation. Everything's very nicely um, documented, and they also just explain quite a lot of stuff about some sort of philosophy about um, how to build good command line tools. And in particular, they explained how entry points in setup tools work. So if I just jump uh, uh, to the setup. Uh, oh, do I have it open? Let's see, where's my setup file? Okay. Uh, sorry, I just got to open this file. Um, where are we? Uh, basically, uh, if you look at this section here, if you include this um, set um, entry points command in your setup.py for your project, then and uh, it will create a command line script that's of callable um, system-wide on 
your, um, your local installation. So you don't have to go to the dire directory where your tool sits and um, type Python and then your command afterwards or make it an executable script. You run pip install your local file and it will create the right entry point um, for you. So I don't have it for that tool, but I can tell you my other um, tool, which I'll get to just now. Um, I'll show you how that operates. But just while we're on the screen, so the way it works is on the left-hand side, you tell it what you want the command to be known as on the shell. So I've got sort of two aliases here, Numisma and Coin, for my Bitcoin collector. And then on the right-hand side, you tell it what, um, what callable you want executed. In. So that has to be sort of your package, then the module, and then colon the name of a, a function in, in that module. And so whenever you call from the shell what's on the left, it, that will be in invoked on the, on the right-hand side. So for our greeter example, you would say that would be like pyconza.greet colon um, greet or something. That may have been not that well explained. This everyone kind of clear how that works or clear enough that they could ask a clarifying question that might <laughs> anyone any questions on that or should I move on right I'll move on um, okay so, in order to demonstrate this, I thought it would be more fun if we had something to actually um, try out. So, I thought let me build a little um, command line interface for something that I'm interested in. So, as I mentioned at the start, I thought there's all these like REST and WebSocket APIs for cryptocurrency prices and exchanges. Um, but I thought it would be more fun if I can do it in the terminal and just connect um, the prices um, from a CLI. And so I started building um, a tool for this, and in order to, um, yeah, along the way, sort of learn about a few new technologies as well. So, so I'm working with Python 3.6, so async IO, then the Atters um, package, um, as well as WebSockets and the, the Streams package. So we can get into those in a little bit more detail, but. Um, if you want to run this code or this, the commands, I just pushed the first of public commit to GitHub half an hour ago. So if you go to my um, GitHub synth forward slash numismatic, you can clone it and pip install it from the local directory and try it out for yourself. Um, there's going to be a lot of changes. I didn't quite get it done in, in time. I think what's there... Um, should be working, but it should. Um, it might not, but by tomorrow it should definitely be um, working. So I'll also try and make it pip installable this evening. Okay, so without um, much further ado on there, let's just start playing around with it. Okay, um, so as I said, we're in this um, okay, clear. If you look at the path, we're in the Python ZA examples directory. My coin tool is installed somewhere else, but I can just um, run coin and I get um, a lot of help listed around the tool. So it's this is the, the screen is it's, um, not as useful as we ca can't see all of it. Um, it's, uh, let's see, we need to be so if you see at the top, um, see it provides a bit of help. Um, and then here we've got a, a whole number of subcommands. So the first one I suggest you start with um, is coin list, which lists all the coins that are on um, crypto compare. So I think there's like 1,500 old coins at the moment and counting. Um, so here you can get a somewhat up to date list. Um, anyone? Let's query something about one of these. Any suggestions from the audience? Something that you can see up on the screen here. Swore. Which one? Swore. Swore? Swore. 
swarm. Okay, so let's do coin info um, uh, swarm. Oh, it's capitals maybe. No. Um, ah, sorry. Uh, minus A. Here we go. It's got some JSON <laughs> back. Um, total coin supply of is that 10 million. Um, let's see what algorithm is it's using. Um, not available. Proof type. Okay. Can't tell you if it's proof of stake or proof of work. But um, that's whatever info it's got on crypto compare. Now, I would have known that it was dash A if I'd first run coin info dash dash help. Told me, um, yes, the assets need to be supplied as dash A. Now, if we look at, um, let's call it up on here. Um, uh, um, which one? Here we go. This is so. This is the CLI code in here. This is the wrapper for my um, API. It's a total 235 lines of code, so not very much. But if you go to the um, uh, info and we look at the assets um, command here, so you see that the uh, it's got this multiple equals true. Yeah, so that's um says we can is a click option that we can pass it multiple ones. So let's say you want minus a Bitcoin, minus a ETH, minus a Zcash. It will um click will combine all those into a list and then pass it to my um function as a, a list. Okay, let's see what else. Um, no, sorry, coin. What else have we got available? Uh, just, um, then you can also pull up some history. Um, so now the, I mean, the So if you go on the right-hand side, if you um, go to the top, you see in my library, I've defined that so um, some default assets, Bitcoin and US dollars, as your default. So if you run coin history without um, anything, uh, God, I didn't test this. Okay, let's leave that one. That's not <laughs> so these ones, are, they're not the, the exciting ones anyway, because those are just rest calls, because the history, oh, okay. Um, is sort of static data. The more interesting one is is the WebSockets bit. So if you look at there, just again on the help, um, so we can listen to some live events. Now, yeah, I still need to improve the API a little bit on this, but basically, um, using the streams library, it's with listen you register a um a listener from the on the websocket which pumps uh, events into this um internal bus or like a stream and then you can register various um collectors on on this all of these are async coroutines and then in order to run it you need to um, run it at the end so the sort of simplest example is coin listen um collect and then run so are we getting bitfinex prices and so by default, it will run for, for 15 seconds. Now, this is already on the, um, yes, it's on the screen, so I could pump, um, pipe that to a, a file. Um, or, uh, yeah. Um, so that's used the default um, setting, with which was Bitcoin and US dollars. I can change the currency to, let's say, uh, Monero and the, oh, the asset to Monero, the currency to, let's say, Zara. Um, oh, sorry, in the wrong section. So I want to listen to Monero in Zara. 
then collect and run. Let's see if that works. Jeff <coughs> Bitfinex probably doesn't have um, doesn't have SAR. Oh, actually, no, it's only looking for live trades. So, um, what's the likelihood of anything going through in RANs kind of while we're um, watching? Huh? Okay, <laughs> um, so rather, um, let's rather stick to the to Bitcoin. So, okay, as it would be. Uh, but uh, this is also, you can supply multiple values. So, let's say if you want um, Bitcoin and Ether. And um, USD and Euro. <coughs> so we see streams of um, coming in. So what I kind of like about the command line inf um, workflow, what I used to do is have these things in Jupyter notebooks and cells, and then I rerun the cells, but then I'd find like get into dependencies, like sometimes that expected that another cell at the top had run first, and then you go and later on you change something at the bottom and something else that needs to be um, run. So that kind of works in interactively developing, but packaging it up in a tool, it's kind of just, you've got a tool that actually works, and the, the syntax for command line interfaces has evolved to something that's, that works. So it gets rid of like a lot of brackets and, and quoting and, and a lot of things. You can just kind of concentrate on, on what you want um, to do with it. The, so some of the nice things by using um, the streams um, module is that all of these run on, um, yeah, there's, so the streams is like a, a lightweight version of Kafka that's just, inside um, in pure pure Python. Well not, I mean, Kafka obviously gives you all kinds of resilience and things, but in terms of it's a stream processing paradigm. So you publish events to a stream and then uh, gives you a sort of pub sub architecture. You can register multiple um, streams with it. So in our example, if you just run collect here without any parameters, it um, streams it to standard out. But let's say I wanted to um, get um, the Bitcoin prices, um, so I've built, uh, right, if we go to collect help, uh, okay, okay, can't get help now, let's go back, collect, um, and let's filter the trade events by, um, which was it, filter by symbol equals ETC USD and output to ETC USD dot text and also collect um, trade events symbol ETH USD, but those ones we want in JSON to uh, ETH USD the text, and now we run. Let's see if that works. So we still got it. I still had a collect without any parameters. So we're still um, piping it to the screen, but we also registered some. Um, other listeners that should take it down to a file. Okay. Yeah, that's probably quoting. Um, let's see. Let's quote this. All oh right, and it's so it's Python double equals. See if you can get this. I suspect it's broken again. There should be more events coming through. Mm. 
uh, okay. And those need to be quoted too. Okay, let's just make it simpler. Just take all the trades, um, JSON, and put them as in trades.json. Um. Uh. Are there any warnings about live <laughs> demos? Um. <laughs> Uh, tried something earlier, which worked. So what? Yeah, I kind of wanted it to. Well we can try it without that. Let's just do JSON. Okay, let's just run it as JSON to the screen. Okay, so see that because um, we're using Atros and um, my events are well Atros classes. I can easily convert them. To dicts and JSON. So that works. Um, minus O. Um, uh. Oh, yeah, so now we're not getting anything to the screen anymore because I'm only piping to the file. And the default uh, output stream to the screen is no longer active, but that worked. So now if you look here, uh, there's catch trades.json. But the idea is that because it's click and it allows nesting multiple subcommands, so I can put as many listen and as many um, collect uh, subcommands in there so I can listen to multiple I exchanges and pipe it to multiple collectors. So whether those are s um, output collectors on disk or if you want to build a, add a, a ZMQ um, web uh, socket or pipe it to your Postgres database or something. But the, the CLI gives you a nice um, tool with which to bring it all um, together and interact with the tool. All right, I think that's pretty much um, it. Let me just get back to the previous <coughs> screen. Yeah, any questions? Oh, uh, well, yeah, let's jump to the. Let's uh, kind of switch that off. Sorry. Okay, uh, uh. so, yeah, before we um, get here, any. Um, uh, questions uh, ab about the last slide and the CLI before I finish up. Okay, so overall then I hope I um, convinced you that um, building command line interfaces in Python is, uh, is fun and easy and um, yeah, just go and use it, stop using Bash use Python, it's awesome for shell scripting, especially if you're on Python 3.6. And if you find any of this stuff interesting, we're um, hiring at Argon Asset Management for DevOps and data scientists. Go and check out the link. Um, there's some instructions there on as to what you need to do. Otherwise, come chat to me on um, ZA Tech sl Slack channel. I'm Synth, or check out the GitHub repo, and download Numismatic, submit some pull requests or bug reports. Yeah, and I hope that was useful. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Any questions? Um, is there any solution to being able to do um, uh, Python one-liners? Um, the, the, the in, in Perl, uh, you s it was great for one-liners, but the block structure and the space sensitivity of Python, um, uh, c can you use semicolons to delimit if blocks or anything useful on the command line? Uh, you, can, you can use um, colon under an if block and then put um, a parameter. You're not, uh, 
a single statement. I don't know if I might have missed it or if it's a silly question, but does have you seen anything around this that helps you do tab completion in the shell? Um, I think there is, there is mention in the textbook indication. I think there's stuff available. Um, I just don't know. I haven't looked into it myself. Um, that's... Uh, 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 how do I go on this next screen? Um, uh, so if you coin, okay, and it doesn't do it by default, but I think there was something in the documentation. It might be able to do it for you. Um, I haven't looked into it. Um, right, any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Okay.